Uh, yeah, who he's the one that got me into education. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, uh, uh, is the next. picture here is a picture of uh, you and, and, and your son John. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of lineage in your family uh, about passing uh, this knowledge down. That's, that's a wonderful heritage to, uh, to be oh, a part of. John and also my daughter Andrea, who is uh, not on that particular page, but uh, followed my uh, steps. Mm -hmm. And John now has a uh, consulting business called Hospitality Performance Partners. Uh, and Andrea is now uh, working in the HR department mm. for uh, Marriott. They used to make an Andrea cake all the time for demonstration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the famous Lowell Massey Andrea cake. Uh, so when, uh, signature cake. We, yeah, we worked on the World Cruise. I uh, made a uh, Andrea tort for Valentine's Day <laughs> for her. Sounds elegant. <laughs> well, what was it? It was a uh, cake that had uh, vanilla and chocolate pastry cream with nesserol filling. It had a touch of rum. Nesserol? Nesserol is a uh, mixture that they used to use in the early days that consists of uh, chestnuts and uh, orange peel and uh, rum and um, uh, not melon, I'm trying to think of the uh, citron. 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 And uh, <clears throat> there was a famous dessert that they used to make at the plaza called the uh, Nesserol Pie, which was like a uh, uh, Bavarian cream with this Nesserol folded in, mm -hmm. topped like a meringue. Mm. It was a uh, answer to Florida's key lime pie. Ah. Uh, and uh, so did. Was it light? Or well, the restaurants tried to develop signature items, uh, things that they would be famous for. Uh, but now, with the advent of innovation, uh, the development of a signature item has kind of lost its shine, and now we want to innovate. So. <clears throat> What might have been a terrific item in 1950 that people would, that my generation would go back for, uh, has been has changed. I think the only one that has survived uh, from those days is the uh, eclair. Mm. But in the early days, the desserts in the hotel consisted of like floating islands. Uh, a lot more upside down face. Yeah. Big Alaskas. Yeah, yeah, big Alaska upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway, things are cyclical, uh, and so sometimes uh, you know things are in favor, and then they go out of favor for a few generations, and then they're rediscovered again, and maybe they're not reinvented in the same exact way, but it's a clever parallel using yeah. the evolved palette uh, and whatever is now available. And, and I think that, you know, sometimes some of the best new ideas probably come from exploring the past. Like fashion. Fashion comes in and comes out, you know. Years ago they had the knickerbocker pants. You know, the whole thing you see mm -hmm. is uh, now they're coming back in a different form. Mm -hmm. Another man by the lace. Right. So, so yeah, so it, it does it does not pay to forsake anything because it could probably reemerge in a new uh, generation uh, of itself. Well, some of the recipes come back now, which was used 500 years ago, uh, uh, in, a, in a different uh, setting, uh, but the basis uh, was, was was built in, I mean, in, in the 15th century, but it comes back now in, in different type of approaches now, and people say, well, you know, well, it's... It was good. If its history yeah. is to satisfy literally millions of people for hundreds of years, it's probably a pretty good bet to uh, keep it on mm. the radar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It goes back again. Mm -hmm. Well, Noble, I want to thank you very much for uh, 
spending this time with us. And maybe uh, another time we'll uh, talk about uh, other aspects of uh, your career. And uh, is there anything, uh, Fritz, that you'd like to ask uh, Nobu before? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> he was so successful, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, in many ways, actually, uh, Nobu was a part of my career also because when I met him in the in the sixties, you know, I mean, he introduced me to the ACF. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Kinjano was the president at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so uh, so our. Uh, our careers uh, start to uh, interlap, mm -hmm. uh, and in many ways, as he called, uh, he became uh, uh, a mentor also. I'm just saying, as he's mm -hmm. uh, on, on many things, uh, he's uh, so. Uh, and I think the key word is really that for young professionals today, they need to so somebody to lean on also. You know, which you forget these days, mm -hmm. but uh, if you don't have anybody to lean on once in a while, you know, see then you, 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 you have a problem. See, so, uh, so I think the old days. Uh, even so, what Nobel said before that a lot of the authors wouldn't uh, share their recipes with you, but yeah. uh, and it was sometimes necessity because there was job protection. Sure, they might be had see, a they, green not, card. In, in, yeah, not 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 like today, but uh, so they didn't share because they were afraid to take their job away. They needed to be employed. So, uh, but what he learned out of this is see that you could get any recipe if you be attentive and watch. Mm. You know, it came out. I mean, I remember in my career one day, uh, uh, the chef made a matzo ball, and it was just outstanding. And any time I asked for the recipe, he said to me, "Well, you know, okay, no problem, but I need that knife from the basement." Mm -hmm. And I never could find the knife. But it came out the matzo ball was made. <laughs> right. So I said to my buddy Carl Heinz, I said, "Well, you watch here, watch there," and we got the recipe. You know, <laughs> uh, just saying. So that so he learned. Uh, to get recipes another way, but what you learned out of this is that if you don't share your recipe with somebody else, you have to order labor. Mm. Right. And by sharing with somebody else, now mm -hmm. what's it called? They do it, and you. And if you're not there for some reason, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's sure it's job security, mm -hmm. but people do get sick, and the show must go on. Well, that you and know. The assumption if it's for sale by the uh, hotel or so, uh, you must have made it. Well, at that time it was different. Today is a completely different type of thing. It's job security hinges on other things than just the recipe. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a, I think the job security hinges today on people management, mm -hmm. how you can understand and, and work and understand other people, uh, to keep a, what's it called, a relationship between uh, the, uh, the top layer of, uh, of the profession and the bottom layer. Mm -hmm. I think this keeps the job today. Uh, in the old days, that was not the case. So, uh, so it's, uh, things do change, uh, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. I think one of the reasons uh, my children followed uh, a culinary track is the camaraderie that Fritz and I shared over the years from our first meeting at the Long Island Culinary Association. Uh, we traveled together in uh, many locations. We, we, we went down together to uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, there we uh, continued down. Uh, Fritz uh, stayed with us. We went all the way back down to Florida and back. And in uh, Nashville, Tennessee is where we had uh, <clears throat> our first uh, it's his pacemaker. Introduction. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were coming back from Florida, and uh, I think it was Crawford, Crawford, it was an actor. We stopped at a souvenir shop, yeah, yeah. and the guy said to me, well, who's that gentleman then? I says, oh, that's uh, Fritz Sonnenschmidt. He says, no, that's not Fritz Sonnenschmidt. I says, yeah, that's Fritz Sonnenschmidt. It's Rory Crawford. Crawford. No, that's a, they gave me the name of an actor, I forget who it was. Robert, Robert Crawford. Broderick Crawford. Uh, Broderick, yeah, Crawford. Broderick, 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 Broderick yeah, Crawford. Yeah. I says, that's not Broderick Crawford, that's Fritz Sonnenstein. He says, you don't know who the hell he is. I says, well, I guess not. <laughs> Famous <laughs> anyway, he's when, nice. when, you leave, when you leave the shop, he's getting in the same car with me. <laughs> I, I say, it's Broderick Crawford. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, we uh, had many, many, many good times uh, together. And I think that the the children, not only my children, but uh, people that worked with the two of us, uh, saw the professionalism, the respect we had for each other, respect we had for food, and the joy we got out of working. Uh, that many uh, others, uh, Michael uh, Muzak, now president of Baldos, was inspired by Fritz, Eddie Kerr. I mean, it's, I could go on and name uh, 24, 25 people there. Uh, well, you know, I have, is inspired. I have Fritz's uh, CV here, and, uh, you know, it reads like uh, something out of uh, almost a fiction. It's... <laughs> You've uh, worked in so many uh, great places. You've written uh, so many books. Uh, uh, you've certainly cooked for some of the most famous people in the world. Uh, you've, you're just widely, widely accomplished. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, Noble, you are a master of your trade, and um, you've been, and besides. Uh, a, a mentor uh, to many. You were a mentor, both of you, to me, and also both my bosses, I might add, at one point, <laughs> <laughs> and colleagues, and, and uh, real, real inspirations to me, um, and uh, gave me a lot uh, to think about and, and brought me up quite a bit. Um, I find that uh, you still, you start from a very, uh, Fritz, you start from a pretty, uh, uh, humble place. Uh, could you talk about uh, your uh, your early memories as a young man uh, and how? how it's a long time ago. <laughs> yes, I know. But you well, I tell you one thing: is um, I grew up in a house. Uh, my mother was an excellent cook. Uh, my grandmother couldn't cook beans. She made a pea soup one which turned out yellow. And I don't know how she got the pea soup yellow, but uh, anyway. So I grew up in a house, and so. Uh, in 1945, uh, the war just ended. Uh, I grew up in, in Germany at that time. Uh, an American regiment came to our village, uh, and the, uh, the cook of the regiment, I have to say also, they were the winning power. They came to our village, and they went around to each house uh, in, in, in our village and asked if they could take up some soldiers. They could have thrown us out, you know, but hmm. they did. But the, uh, the cook's name was George. Uh, never forget, the only thing he could say in German was goddamn Scheisterboop. That's what he said to me. <laughs> uh, and he was a lazy guy, but uh, it was my benefit because I did the pancakes. And I, did, I think I never still remember these pancakes. Can still, I hope because the closest to the pancake we made at the time. <laughs> Light and uh, fluffy. And, yeah, and, and, and the bread now, and we did all this time. I started cooking, and I loved it. Uh, and so I said to my, 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 my father was in, uh, in the war, in the prisoner of war in Russia at the time. He was a uh, prisoner of war? Well, yeah, in Russia, you know, the thing is, he, is uh, he didn't come back till 48. Uh, is, uh, and um, I said to my grandmother, I want to be a cook. She says, over my dead body. Now, I have to say, my family, I was the black sheep, so to speak. My family was diplomatic, what's it called, and mostly soldiers in, in, in the history of my family. And so I want to be a cook. She says, now we end up in prison. Uh, and so uh, she made me go to school, uh, and I, I failed two two years, uh, what's he called, in a type of a college. They said, don't bring him back, he's mentally challenged. <laughs> she put me in a private school with the 800 years of that school. I still have the privilege of have the worst grades ever. I, I've, I failed everything ex except religion, the whole thing. <laughs> My father came back in 48, and I said, I said, you want to be a cook? Fine, no problem. We looked for the apprenticeship, which I found, say, in a small little place in Munich. Uh, the chef owner was uh, master chef Anna Eichner, uh, and I started there. And suddenly, I had all A pluses because ah. I, I wanted to be. Uh, and so I started my apprenticeship because uh, schools like we, we have now, what's it called uh, in this country, uh, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I did three years apprenticeship, and I, would, uh, I learned from scratch. Uh, the first year, you know, did of course the the little uh, uh, jobs of cleaning, you know, uh, uh, cleaning pots now. Clean up now, sweep the floor, the whole thing. Is so was there a brigade? The whole well, it was a brigade system. We had well, uh, Anna Eichner was the, was the, the, the chef, 
and then she had a sous chef, uh, she called, and then there were about uh, ten other uh, different cooks in there. Stations. Cooks, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, there were uh, six apprentices. Mm. Uh, and, and the apprentice thing is like this, that if you, in the third year, you're in charge of all the apprentices. Mm. So the first year, what's it called, you listen to the apprentice, which is the second year, the mm -hmm. third year. Uh, and so, of course, they give you all the jobs that they want to do. So, you know, you, you, you clean pots now, you do this and this now. Uh, and um, you, once in a while, we're allowed to, to help a chef to do something. The second year, you could close it to the range. So mm -hmm. you first you were the range. And the third year, you were on the range. So, you know, and see this. Okay. So, you, 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 Work your way you worked your way up the whole thing. And you went to school once, once a week, uh, one day. You got into school. And uh, one day you got off sometimes, hmm. uh, but uh, we went to school and say, in the school what you got, uh, our restaurant was a family restaurant. So I learned you know, uh, uh, family type of food uh, and did, I didn't learn the classical French food. Mm -hmm. Of course... Not your family. No, no, in, 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 my, in the kitchen I, 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 I learned it, okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and then other, other apprentices learned in a classical restaurant. Mm -hmm. They never learned how to make a potato soup you know, or a potato mm -hmm. dumpling or mm -hmm. something like this. So at the school, it was, it was something which evened it out. See, I learned classical, mm -hmm. and they learned what's called basic common food. So everybody got an idea of that. Good, broad foundation. Is, uh, and I have to say, I always was lucky uh, in my entire life. You know, is, uh, I, f I fell basically in, in the profession. Uh, I had good masters, uh, which uh, really... Uh, my uh, my master, she always said to me, uh, if you want to be something in this life, you take three items and you follow through. Cook simple, concentrate on flavor, and cook only what you know. Uh, I did this all my life. Uh, I, I cooked simple, uh, with, which would yield up with recipes with 50 ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, some maybe with just maybe four or five ingredients that the rest you put yourself in, mm -hmm. your passion. Uh, and. Um, I always consider on flavor rather than garnish, which is the real key word. Mm -hmm. uh, and I cooked only on my level. I mean, it doesn't matter that level stays, see, but uh, you go up in the level, but if I go over that, you become insecure. That was the best thing I ever took with me from her, uh, which she called, which really uh, made my career. Uh, I would recommend this to any young professional going to call the arts. Uh, don't get sidetracked by this whole thing of the so-called, what's it called, in, in, inventory uh, chefs mm -hmm. or television chefs, you know, which, which uh, make a show, you know, make a show, which you call that it looks fantastic, you know, uh, uh, and uh, it looks like plastic, but you can eat it. Right, tastes it's, bad, looks good, it, tastes it, bad. Exactly. And so, uh, so I was followed that and became successful. Uh, and um, uh, after I finished my apprenticeship, oh, I have to say one thing. <laughs> uh, my apprenticeship now is uh, I had uh, uh, the uh, Ferdinand Metzner, his father was one of my. Uh, tasting, uh, actually, uh, on the jury of my, uh, my, my apprenticeship. You know, when we finished, we had to do a practical, and he was in the whole thing there. So uh, I was. He was a judge for the practical? Yeah, you know, we had uh, six or 12 uh, top chefs from, from Munich uh, on the panel there, and they asked you questions. So, because now you're a little kid, now, and they called what it was about. Uh, How many apprentices were there? Well, there were about maybe 40 from all oh. different restaurants now. And how, uh, how many days with this team? Uh, there was uh, three days, mm. three days. The first day was we sit down in the classroom and did the mathematical and all the academia. And then the next day, we did a cooking practical by lottery. I was lucky. Mm. I uh, I just picked a, a ragu fan, which is mm. uh, I just had to boil the wheel and, and dice it to make a cream sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole thing is here, it's gone. My poor body got a, a rack of venison. You know, oh. The whole thing is here. <laughs> okay, it was sweating and all that. And on the third day, we had a, um, a, 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 a they asked you a question. Uh, and I walked in there, and one of these uh, master chefs asked me, uh, my boy, you know, German, can you tell me when you know when a pheasant is young or old? I go, hama, 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 hama. Uh, then I said, well, when you have a chicken, they say that an old chicken or a young chicken is in the back, that little uh, soft bone in the back. Part, if it's soft, it's young. Mm -hmm. If it's hard, it's a soup pain. You see? So I said right. that. So the guy said, no, 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 no. This is not right. Uh, and the pheasant, if the eyes, the color red on the eye of the pheasant is light, it's a young one. And if it's dark, it's an old one. Hmm. And the master next to him said, 
if I can't say this on, on anything, he said bullshit. <laughs> and suddenly these two guys start to fight. 